we miss we miss the way that things used to work, but we're all getting uh, acquainted with working with technology, having classes online, having great meetings and presentations like this online. But let's be honest, there is a way to excel at doing classes online. So with that, let's go ahead and introduce um, presenting their presentation on how to be successful in an online class. Please welcome Lisa Kennedy from Distance Education. Thank you very much, Christopher. I appreciate that. It's great to be here with you all today. So thank you for inviting me. Um, I'm really happy to be here and I'm excited to be talking to you about our online classes here at Victor Valley College. Um, I appreciate that if our students are new to online classes, that it might cause a bit of anxiety. I respect and appreciate that. Um, but I would suggest that they don't worry, um, that we're excited about distance education here at the college, and we're excited to have um, our students here and to be participating in our online program. Um, I appreciate and respect that this has been a really challenging time for everyone, um, not only for our students, but, but for our professors as well. Um, there are many professors who um, had never even prior to the, prior to the virus, had never even um, taught on using Canvas before, or maybe even another learning management system. So it's been a pretty big adjustment for all of us as much as it's been for our students. It's been a new, I'd like to say it's been a new adventure for our faculty, but I think if they were here, they, they would all have their own thoughts and their own opinions, which I would respect all of them. Um, but I consider it a really exciting adventure. And so I'm excited that you're all part of the distance education program. Um, and what I came here to share with you today are just a few tips. Um, I think I have nine on how to be successful in an online course. Um, so let me go ahead and share some of those with you. Um, the first thing I would say, tip number one, is that you treat your online course just like you would treat a face-to-face -face course. Um, when it comes to online classes, though you can be flexible, such as when you choose to log into your courses or even when you complete your work, when you do your assignments, you really need to treat your um, online courses the very same way you would have treated your face-to-face -face class. Um, and you want to do that right from the beginning, right from the beginning of the course, right from the start of the course. You want to think about them as you just as you would your face to face classes and and all of the tactics that you apply to be successful in your face to face classes. You want to do that in your online classes as well. That's very important and that's very, very critical. Um, sometimes I've had my own students in the past say how um, you know, they kind of get, they start working online and, and they, they think they have time to do things or all of a sudden they think about their schedule a little differently because it's all online and, and sometimes the schedule catches up with them um, in a way that's not effective for them. So it's really important to kind of have that, wear that same cap, the same way that you would think about your face-to-face -face classes and how you would prepare for it, how you would organize it, how you would work through it, how you would study for it, all of those things. You want to bring all of those um, great skills that you have into your online courses, okay? And again, right from the beginning of the semester, it just helps to set a great foundation for how you're going to work through the rest of the class. Um, tip number two that I would suggest is log into your course frequently, often. Um, in fact, um, log into your course on the very first day that classes start. And when you first log into your class, look at everything. We want you to look at everything. We want you to click on all the buttons. We want you to click on all the buttons in the navigation panel. We want you to work through your um, instructor's orientation module. We want you to access any announcements that they may have posted. Click on any buttons they have on their homepage. Just learn where everything takes you. Um, don't, don't be afraid, you will not break anything. We want you to do that. We want you to click on everything and work your way through it so that you can get a really good understanding where your professor, um, where you can find everything in your particular course, okay? So click on, click on everything and get in there. Um, don't forget one of the most important things that you can do is to locate your syllabus. So find wherever it is that your instructor has their syllabus posted. Oftentimes you'll find it in the left-hand navigation panel. You'll find a link on a homepage, and you'll, you'll probably also find it posted in an orientation module or an introduction module. But find that syllabus and keep it very close to you because your class syllabus is basically a roadmap, right? It's a road that, roadmap that will often include information regarding readings, um, outside readings in your course, textbook readings in your course, assignments, um, and all of the corresponding due dates with assignments. 
make note of the due dates, like make period, note period of the due dates. Those are so critical and those are so important and you wanna make sure that you make note of them in a similar way that you would in your face-to-face -face courses. Um, please pay attention, particular attention to any assignments that might be due in the first week of class. You might notice that your professor will have um, maybe one or two assignments that are due in the very first week of class. And those are very, very important to you because um, if those assignments are not submitted by the due date, it actually has the potential to impact your standing in the course. Um, we have a number of students that are on wait list and, and if your, your um, instructor has identified a specific assignment as you must submit this assignment so that I know you're participating in the class and you don't submit it, they may think you do not want to continue with the class, so you may lose your standing in the class. Um, so please make sure that you make note of any assignments that are due in the first in the first week of class and make sure you that you submit them on time. Um, also, I would encourage you to review all of your instructor's course policies. You know, I respect and appreciate that from course to course, instructors may have um, different policies in their classes. So please make sure again that you make note of those, go ahead and print them out so that you can refer to them often. Um, also, the instructor will have them posted in certain locations in the class. So make sure that you're familiar with their policies, their communication policy, um, their grading policy. Uh, do they have a late uh, policy in their class? Do they accept late assignments? Those are all things that you want to know. And, and all of those are going to be very, very important and critical to you throughout the semester. So please make sure that, that you make note of those. Um, also, make sure that you check into your course at least four days a week. Um, you wanna check in on any announcements that your instructor may have posted. Um, maybe they've posted a, a feedback to um, some, some work that you've submitted. So they've graded your work and they've posted some feedback for you. All of that will be very, very important. Um, there might be, your, your instructor may have a, a question and answer board that they have open online and, and students may be participating in that. And you can gain a lot of um, great information from the Q&A boards. Um, and you might have um, students that are asking, your peers might be asking questions on those boards as well. And that's a great part, that's a great opportunity for you to become part of um, what's happening in the course. Um, if your instructor is using discussion boards in your class, you're going to want to check those for any comments. So if you've, if, you, if you've responded to a discussion board and you've submitted your initial response to your instructor or your initial post, oftentimes then students will respond, your peers will respond to those posts, and you want to see those. You want to see um, what, they, what they have posted online so that you can respond back to them. So make sure that you're active in all of these different areas in your course, okay? Um, if you let too many days go by, you may actually unfortunately fall far behind and, um, and then you find it very difficult to catch up. That is another, um, that's another thing that happens that my students have shared with me, that they sometimes they lose perspective of where they are in the course and, and, and being in an online course because of the flexibility and because of the independence that you have in it. Um, sometimes it's kind of easy to lose track and you don't want that to happen. So make sure that you, you don't let too many days go by before you actually check back into your courses because we don't want you to be in a situation where you're finding it difficult to catch up. Um, tip number three, stay organized. As with any course, but especially an online course, it's really important to stay organized. You wanna, you wanna make sure that you organize your work in a way that ultimately makes sense to you. Um, here's another important tip as well. While you're working through your content in your courses, um, make sure that you're taking good notes while you're reading things that maybe your instructor has posted, or you're watching online videos, or you're watching lecture videos. Um, just like you would in your your face to face classes, you take notes, you jot things down, you make um, you make outlines. You want to do all of those same things in your online courses. Um, also, pay particular attention to any instructions that your professors post with any of the content that they that they have in your online course. So if there's a video, what are the instructions above it? What are they asking you to do with that video? Um, how is that video going to be important to you later on in, later on in the semester? You know, it may be very important to your activities that that week in, you know, in addition to your understanding of the content in the course. So please pay, pay very close attention to any of the instructions that your professor may have posted with the content that they include in the course. I promise you, 
everything that they post in there, they have determined is important to your success in the class. So that's why it's so important that you pay attention to it. Um, you know, again, even though online courses offer us a lot of flexibility on when we're going to actually work on our courses, like based on our based on our schedules, consistency is still very, very important. So yes, it's a great benefit that we can kind of pop in an online course when when it's when we, it's convenient for us. But that consistency of participating in that class is very, very important, um, and it's crucial for for students to develop um, very strong time management skills so that they can succeed and be successful in their course and ultimately in their program. One way to effectively manage your time is to create a schedule. Um, and, and when you create a schedule, you're, you're creating a, a time period so that you're gonna set aside time to read the assignments, to read the um, content in the course and read your textbook. You're gonna set aside time that you're gonna study for that course. You're gonna set, set aside time um, that you're gonna participate in the discussion forums. You're gonna set, it, set, set aside time so that you complete your assignments. So it's very important that you designate all of these specific um, time periods so that you can work consistently on your course and you can prepare you can prepare um, all of the materials that you're working on throughout the term, which once again will help you to kind of avoid all of those last minute um, situations that come up, that will come up when you realize that you've run out of time or that an assignment is due more quickly than you realized. Um, and again, that's that's sometimes my experience with with working with students, especially when you're trying to manage more than one online class, right? There aren't those face-to-face -face moments with your instructors where they're reminding you about a upcoming assignments. And so that's why that schedule becomes so very valuable to you because those were things that you'll all make note of on your own. Tip number four, and this one I can't say strong enough, submit your work on time. Um, complete your assignments on time. One of the most common things that I hear from my students online, again, is how easy it is to lose track of time. Um, and unfortunately, in those moments, then they're, they're, your assignments can, be, can become overdue, okay? And you may have missed an, a timeline for an assignment. So it's very, very important that you submit your work on time. Um, if you miss if you miss, miss due dates, depending on your instructor's grading policy, it could actually end up costing you quite a few points in your class and ultimately impact your grade at the end of the semester. Um, also, keep in mind that problems happen with technology, things you would have never imagined may happen. So try to submit your work early or at least try not to submit it at the last um, moment. As an online student myself, I've been in the situation where I've had an assignment due at 11.59 and I waited till 10 o'clock to submit it and then something happened with my computer or something unexpected happened and I could not submit my work on time. And if you have an instructor who has a no late work policy, then that can be problematic for you. So always kind of try to work ahead of the schedule instead of working kind of right up to the due date. Um, one last thing about submitting uh, your work, it's a very, very good idea um, to make a copy of your work. So for example, if you are posting an answer in a text box, um, it's a really great idea to go ahead and make a copy of that answer and then just copy it and save it in a file. This way, if something unexpected happens, um, because again, you never know if something unexpected happens, then at least you will have a copy of the assignment that you can that you can go ahead and, and share with your instructor. Um, you may never know if you need it. And if you do, it can save you quite a bit of time so that you're not recreating something. Um, tip number five, and probably my favorite is participate, participate, partici participate, actively participate in your classes. Many online classes are built about around the concept of collaboration. And in my opinion, that's one of the most exciting parts of the class. Um, regular participation is very important to the quality of um, a student's online experience. And that's true for everyone. That's not only true for students, but that's true for instructors as well. Um, I, I teach psychology, and so I have had the opportunity to watch some of the most amazing conversations unfold in my online courses. And um, they, they've just been fantastic. It's just, it's so wonderful to watch students um, share experiences because we have students from 
all different backgrounds and and all different age groups and with all different work experience uh personal experiences and it's it's so interesting and fascinating to to watch all of you work together on a discussion board to answer a question I may have asked or um, to respond to um, to respond to a post or to create a solution to a problem. It's just fantastic. I know personally as an online student, I have learned so much from my peers. And so I hope that that becomes your experience as well. So participate, participate, participate. Take advantage of the discussion boards. They will allow you to connect with the other students in a similar way that you do in your face to face classes. Um, collaborative activities will also give you the chance to build relationships with other students when you engage with them in online activities you'll get a chance to know a little bit about them. Um, and then the other students in the course also will have a valuable resource um, from you when when you're working through assignments or when you're preparing for exams, you have amazing ways of helping each other. Maybe your instructor has a Q and a board it's a great place to kind of work together and assist each other, um, you can help each other with assignments you can help each other prepare, you can help each other better understand course materials. Um, the discussion boards are very, very interesting because here's where that flexibility piece comes in as well, because you can participate in them whenever it's convenient for you. So there might be an ongoing discussion going on and um, maybe you jump in at a later time in the week or later on in the evening and, and you can jump in there and you will still have had the opportunity to see the conversations that have you know transpired on the discussion board so participate 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 in fact it's a really great idea to set goals on when you're going to check on the discussion boards and again that's valuable to you when you are when part of your assignment is to respond to a peer. Um, so you wanna go ahead and make sure that you check actively on them. Working with other students really can be very helpful to your progress in the class. And you never know it, but you may actually make a friend or two. Um, I've been lucky enough to have made a few friends on discussion boards as well as, an, as a college instructor. And, and so it's just really a great place to, um, to, to share you know, to share ideas and thoughts um, and work together with other people who are working through the same things that you are. Um, some of the best parts of my online classes really have been the conversations that my students have with each other on the discussion boards. So participate, participate, participate. Um, number six, keep track of your progress. Um, monitor how you're doing in the course. Go to the grade page, check it often. Um, look at your instructor's feedback. But try to take note of areas where you may be struggling. Um, pay attention to the feedback that your instructor has offered you because that might give you information that you need then to be successful for the remainder of the, of the course. If you find that there are areas that you may be having a difficult time, make adjustments, right? Make a note of that and make adjustments. Uh, maybe you need to think about a different way of studying for your class, um, for your course. Maybe you wanna change the times that you're working in your course or the locations that you're studying, that could be problematic as well. And I understand you know, how difficult that might be you know, based on everything that we're going through now, where so many of us, we're all home. So um, so there could really be a variety of different situations that may occur that, that you may look at and you may think, you know what, maybe I need to change and kind of shake up the way I'm working through this class. Um, so there could be a variety of different things that you can do to change direction and to make improvements. Um, tip number seven, reach out. Reach out to your professors. If you feel like you're falling behind, ask questions, speak up let your instructors know right being in an online environment is different than being in a face-to-face -face environment where an instructor may recognize that you might that a student might be struggling with a different with a certain idea or concept so it's so important that you communicate to your instructors if you are if you are struggling if you don't understand something um, if you can't find something in your course reach out don't wait until an assignment is almost due or don't wait until the end of a semester to ask a question or to ask for help because if you wait too long unfortunately then it may be too late so um, email your instructor um, some instructors will offer virtual office hours um, and they'll post those office hours um, on the calendar or in the um, in the online scheduler in conferred zoom um, or they might note them in their announcements if they offer virtual office online office 
online office hours, that's a wonderful time to visit them. It's a wonderful time to check in. Um, you can ask, you can ask questions, you can ask for help on assignments, whatever it is that you need. That's a great opportunity to do it. Um, whatever you do, if you're struggling, ask for help. Be proactive. Your work in your course is very, very important. And your instructor may not know that you are struggling unless you contact them. So reach out and reach out sooner rather than later. Um, tip number eight, know your resources. Um, take some time to become familiar with the services that our campus offers. And I know that you're learning a lot about those services now. Make note of them. Um, um, I, you may have already learned about some of the services that are offered by our tutors. You may have learned a little bit about our writing centers, our math centers, um, all of the different services that our libraries offers, and of course, our amazing counselors. So access these services and staff as you need them. Um, I know these folks. I sit with them in meetings. Um, I work alongside them, and they spend a lot of time creating programs and services and systems for our students so that you can be successful at um, on our campus. Um, so if you need additional assistance, please reach out to these people. Please reach out to these people. Please reach out to the departments. They want to see you succeed. You know, they're waiting for you. So if you need them, reach out. And again, reach out sooner versus later. And the, my last tip is tip number nine, and that is persistent. Be persistent. Um, there is a very good possibility that you may have technical problems. Um, you may have challenging issues with Canvas. The list goes on, right? Um, in fact, our instructors sometimes have technical issues or our instructors sometimes have um, problems with Canvas. So we understand that. You know, we understand sometimes the, the some of the more challenges that occur in the online environment. Um, but hang in there. Um, as I shared with you earlier, for some of our instructors, Canvas is a brand new learning platform for our instructors. And, um, you know, um, a year ago, some of them weren't even in Canvas at all. Um, they were just strictly teaching face to face. And like you, they had to jump forward and they had to learn how to use Canvas and look at all these amazing materials that they create and they present to you in, in their face to face classes and all these great videos and, and all of these wonderful group activities that they have that they normally do inside a traditional face to face classroom. And when we all, when the college closed and we all got sent home, all of a sudden it became this, this moment where all of those things that we normally do face to face, we now had to do in the online environment. And again, some of our faculty weren't even using Canvas because they didn't need to. And um, so they had to learn this brand new platform, just like many of you did. And so they understand that they understand and respect the challenges um, that exist when we, you know, when we go from something we knew um, to something brand new um, that we didn't and um, and learning how to create these amazing dynamic um, courses for you that you will find interesting and engaging and that you can ultimately be successful in. So um, I respect that for many of you, uh, moving into the online environment has been challenging and um, it has been the same thing for our instructors. But um, in the end, we all run into both similar and different challenges. If you're struggling, ask for help. Um, when you need it and hang in there, be persistent, um, reach out. And um, I hope that you all have an amazing semester. Um, back. Sorry. There we are. Hi. Wonderful. To, to everybody out there, to all Ramland, do we have any questions here? Any uh, any more tips? Actually, if you don't mind me asking, um, Lisa, what is what would you say is the most common pitfall that most students are making in their online classes right now? That they think they have time, that they think <laughs> they, that that time gets away from them, 
that's the thing that I find happens a lot, that time gets away from them. Um, I think because of the flexibility of the online environment, um, and because maybe it doesn't hold some of the formalities of a traditional face-to-face -face classroom, that it has the potential to easily get lost. And, yeah. and so, it, and that's why I spend so much time talking about the schedule, about creating, creating a schedule for yourself, about becoming best friends with that syllabus, so that you, you really have a plan that you are consistently going to stick to, right? That you're going to check into the class during certain times, um, that, you're, that you're going to, you know, that you've scheduled yourself when you're going to look at the, uh, this, um, the discussion boards, when you're going to check on the announcements, when you're going to look to see if my professor has virtual office hours? When am I going to prepare for this exam? Um, I think just sometimes maybe, I don't know, for lack of a better word, the informality that the online environment provides, it just kind of allows us to, to you know, to not, to not afford ourselves and create for ourselves the same structure that we always do in our face-to-face -face classes. And then just to add to that, Chris, as well, um, that when you come into your face-to-face -face classes, your student, your professors are standing in front of a classroom and they're consistently reminding you and you're consistently hearing it over and over again. And I think that sometimes that might have a different impact than maybe reading it on an announcement board. And that's why it's, it's so important to be intentional, intentional with your plan, you know, intentional with how you're going to process through this class, intentional with when you're going to study, all of those things. Because I think then what it does is it helps to kind of bring back some of the formality of the traditional face-to-face mm -hmm. -face class. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And would you dare to say that somebody who is able to schedule it out and plan appropriately, do you think that a lot of students who can actually lean in and make it work for them, that they could actually use it to help them finish faster or accomplish more in a shorter time period? I think what they'll do is in terms of just the course, maybe not, I don't know if you're speaking long-term in terms of like their, their whole process during their whole time in college, but in terms mm -hmm. of the course, I think what it does do is it helps students to be more efficient and if you can be more efficient and you can be more effective in your class, then it reduces a lot of things. It reduces frustration. It reduces worry. It reduces anxiety, um, which then don't always play well with you being su successful in an online course, right? Right. Yeah, exactly. So um, yeah, that, stru that structure is, is really, really important. And when students, and you know what, to be honest, Chris, we tell faculty the same thing, right, about being intentional about the, what, we, what we actually post in our online courses. We are, the announcements we post, the reminders we post, with all of those things, we're being intentional so that students can be successful. And the flip side of that is that students are also being intentional with their work in the online class so that they can be efficient and effective, because ultimately that's what we want. Online classes can be so exciting. Um, they can be so exciting and they can be so engaging. Um, and, and like I said, my, my, the area that I love the most is the discussion boards. Um, I Reading my own students' posts, especially because I teach psychology, I have gone anywhere from laughing um, to crying. Um, just the amazing support systems that my students create on the online, on their online, in their online discussions are literally amazing. And um, I'm often overwhelmed by them in a good way, in a good way. We had a, we had a question come through the q and I'm going to summarize it a little bit. Essentially, okay. it has to do with email communication between um, students and teachers, of course, in an online modality. Mm -hmm. So what advice would you give to a student if they have a teacher? And I know this is got to be a one off. What happens if they're not hearing back, you know, in a timely manner? What do you recommend? Right. So um, what I would recommend is what we always uh, what we always recommend to students is that you give professors 24 to 48 hours to respond. And oftentimes professors will have that as part of their policy just to let to let students know. Um, so give them about 24 to 48 hours to respond. Um, and then if you don't hear from them, what we request that you do is that you email us again, because we do get a number of emails. And so it's, it's very easy for us as well to, you know, for something potentially to have gotten lost. Um, if you do not hear, if you do not hear back from your instructor, um, then I would consider maybe joining a virtual office hour. Or if, if a professor is, is has, sometimes professors will do a little online session, um, and they'll it might not be required, but they'll go ahead and they'll invite students to come in and participate. So if students would like, they can jump into that. 
um, and to respond to to respond on the Q and A board. Put you know, put questions on the Q and A board. Again, a little bit to the side. Ask questions of the other students in the class. Um, you know, and then ultimately, if an extended period of time goes by and then you do not hear from the um, from the professor, uh, you know, when you hear no response at all, then it might be a good idea to contact the department so you can see, you know, how you know you can make that connection back with the instructor. Does that help? Definitely. Absolutely. Okay. Let me ask: Is there a is there a a turnaround time or um, a suggestion that you make to teachers as far as how to structure their availability to make sure that they meet the needs? Right. So normally, in, in terms of the email, most professors say 24 to 48 hours, right? So that that's typically um, that's typically what I do as well. I, I would encourage students to read the professor's policies um, because in the policies, they're usually fairly specific about that. So students have a have a, you know, kind of like a guidance um, so that they'll know um, whether it's email or whether it is um, grading you know, how long it will take them to do grading. Um, obviously, like, you know, smaller assignments to be graded more quickly than projects, that may take a longer period of time. But whatever is happening, if, if the student feels like, if the student feels like they're not getting the information they need quickly enough, and they need that information to be successful to move forward, then I would absolutely encourage students to reach out. Um, the professor will give a variety of different contacts Thank you so much. They'll give them a variety of different ways that they can contact them. Um, and usually they'll have a regular effective contact policy. And in that policy, there, there will be several ways. So, you know, they can contact via email. Sometimes professors will pri provide um, a, a phone where they can be contacted via phone. Um, office hours, virtual, when we come back to campus, campus hours. Um, so the, the professors will offer a variety of different ways in which you can communicate with them. So I encourage students, if one isn't working, to try a different source, to try a different route um, so that they can communicate with their instructor. Wonderful. Well, yeah, it looks like Brian D. Portillo says, can you stress the use of Canvas inbox? He said instead of EVC school email, but I'm going to say in addition to yeah, so we do. It, it's really helpful to us if we work within the inbox, because then everything is right there and connected to our Canvas courses. So it just makes it efficient. It's an efficient system. Um, I think that especially now in the way that we use the inbox in Canvas, because that's so efficient, um, we might not as often be looking for students to be emailing us via VVC as much. Um, I have certainly seen that with my own classes, Chris, I've definitely seen that decline. Most students are choosing to communicate via Canvas. Oh, and that, that's another thing. Uh, professors will indicate their preferred method of communication. So in my case, it's via Canvas. So they'll go ahead and indicate that. And again, in our VVC, this is what's so beautiful about Canvas. In our VVC emails, we're getting information from everywhere, right? From our mm -hmm. departments, from the campus, um, from professional development we're doing. Um, and so it's, it's easier for the students' emails to get lost in that location. So I would definitely recommend Canvas. But even more importantly than that, to, for the students to read the professor's syllabus and to see, because they will, they will typically say, my preferred method of communication is, and that's where you want to start. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate all the details and all of the tips on how to be successful. I know, of course, in today's day and age, there's all kinds of pitfalls that we can fall into. Mm -hmm. But like you said, being prepared, making sure we have that time schedule, you know, reviewing and re-reviewing the course syllabus. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure like anything else, you know, the more accessible we make ourselves, the more other folks will make themselves accessible to us. So absolutely. Um, everybody keep that in mind. Before I let you go, Lisa. Mm -hmm. We would love to know where you got your start. What was your first job, your first real job where you had a paycheck with taxes taken out? I thought I, I thought I escaped that question. <laughs> Because, yeah. oh, because you have a good answer. Okay, hold on, because I'm so going to date myself, but I, <laughs> I'm going to throw it out there. My first job was as a concession worker in a roller skating rink in Brooklyn, New York. Oh, in New York. They were, yep. they're, they're in Bensonhurst. Okay. In Bensonhurst, where the with the staying alive movie, you know, staying alive mm -hmm. with the Bee Gees. <laughs> that was my, I think it was called USA Skates and I was a concession girl, popcorn, soda. <laughs> Wonderful. That was well, my gonna first job. We're going to throw you a birthday job. party at Holiday Skate here in Victorville and let's see if you still have it. Yes, yes. <laughs> 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 well, wonderful. Thank you, Lisa, again so much for your great presentation and, and for sharing some more about yourself. We really appreciate it. Yes. Thank, thanks for having me, Chris. I appreciate it. 
Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. You take care. Thank you. Bye, well, everyone. Bye-bye.